Let's talk about the city of the future, or at least how the cities of the future might be built if it were up to someone like Elon Musk to handle the design and implementation using the resources from companies like Tesla, The Boring Company, SpaceX, and beyond. What exactly could we accomplish in building a better city? Obviously, we've more or less run out of opportunities to build new cities here in North America, unless somehow Starbase actually becomes one, and we're not advocating for demolition of anything that's already in use or bulldozing a forest to make way for some techno-utopia. That's just not what we're about. So this is more of a thought experiment and a bit of fun and a look into what could be the future. Though we should say there are still opportunities out there to build a real city from scratch. Dubai is a fair example. It didn't exactly just spring up out of the desert, but pretty close to it. And the real action is happening on the Asian continent. There are a ton of new cities popping up in China over the past decade. Some of them are custom designed to operate as economic and manufacturing hubs. Others are just straight up clones of famous European cities. There are even a bunch of new cities in Asia that have been completely built, but are still empty ghost cities that are presumably just waiting for the people to arrive. So what if one of those new cities were built entirely on Elon Musk's philosophies for sustainable energy, efficiency, and automation. That could be something pretty amazing. So let's talk about it. We can start off with the most obvious point and talk about how transportation might function in an ideal city of the future, because that is the main focus at Tesla, changing the way we view transportation using sustainable energy and autonomy. So our future city would have electric cars everywhere, right? No. Elon Musk has talked a lot about how much he hates traffic, and he doesn't particularly like roads either. So where we're going, we don't need roads, and that doesn't mean flying cars though either. We see this in a lot of science fiction visions of the future. The Fifth Element, Star Wars Episode Two, Back to the Future Part Two absolutely massive amounts of flying cars. So many that the sky is just thick with vehicles flying around up there. Looks cool in a movie, but does anyone actually want to live in a city like that? Elon Musk, for one, doesn't think so. And he said this before when asked about his own vision of the future. If we did have a bunch of electric quadcopters and drones and stuff flying around above our heads all day, it would get really friggin' annoying. We all know the sound that a DJI camera drone makes when it's flying around. Imagine that multiplied by 100 and then surrounding you at all times. No thanks. So Elon has rightly speculated that the best course of action is actually to move as much of our transportation infrastructure under the ground as possible. We know the man loves tunnels. This solves so many problems that are inherent to our existing city design. For one, just imagine how much more space would be available if we didn't have roads. For two, think of how peaceful a city could be without street traffic. For traveling short distances, people would just walk or use small electric transports like a scooter or an e-bike. To travel a longer distance, you would just go down one level to the automated transit system where an autonomous electric pod whisks you away and deposits you directly underneath your destination. The Boring Company is really just a code name for the infrastructure company of the future. And we know that the future of Tesla is mass manufacturing fully autonomous vehicles. These won't be just Model 3s and Model Ys without steering wheels. The Tesla of the future will be unrecognizable from what we might consider to be a car today. The beauty with this kind of infrastructure is that we can go really deep and build on multiple layers. Roadways are inherently two-dimensional. You can make it wider, but you can't make it deeper. There are some places where they've built roads on top of roads, but there are diminishing returns on that, and you can't build roads on top of roads on top of roads, but you can build layers upon layers of tunnels that go progressively deeper. Elon Musk has theorized 
that you can actually build deeper under the ground than you can build upwards above the ground. So if the average height of a skyscraper is about 250 meters or 820 feet, then according to Elon, we can go at least that deep, plus a lot more. So obviously we want the shallowest depth reserved for human transport to keep people moving as quickly and efficiently as possible. Maybe the layer below that is for robot transit, a system that moves androids and utility bots around the city. And below that, a whole network for transporting goods, moving products and commodities through a network of tunnels and tubes. Take a grocery store, for example. Instead of a transport truck rolling up the back and offloading all the product, what if a transport pod arrived through a tunnel below the surface? All of the receiving and overstock storage could be moved into a basement level, and then product is sent up to the retail floor via elevator as needed. It also would reduce the footprint of grocery and retail stores by making them more three-dimensional. Back in the late 1800s and early 1900s, People made very effective use of pneumatic tubes. Before we had electronic transmission widely available, the only way to get a message to someone was to write it on paper and then fire it through a vacuum tube. It was a genius bit of engineering, and people used these tubes to great effect. By the late 1800s, London, England had over 20 miles of tube network. They had a tube that connected the post office to the Aberdeen fish market so that people could quickly order fresh fish. We should bring back tubes, or like smaller scale tunnels that can facilitate the small scale transport of hard goods. Like imagine ordering something from Amazon and it just pops up in your house through a tube and then it could go the other way. All of your garbage and recycling, you just load it into a tube and it gets whisked away to be processed by some garbage sorting robot. It's not that far-fetched. We figured out decades ago how to connect every home in the city to a network of water, sewage, electricity, and natural gas. Could we not add delivery and disposal tubes into the mix? And that can start to sound like a bunch of flippant luxuries. But this is really about efficiency. This is what Elon Musk is talking about. The best part is no part. The best action is no action. Automation and autonomy is the key to efficiency. And greater efficiency equals greater productivity. Human beings are the most powerful resource that exists on the earth. If we can maximize human productivity by automating and simplifying our living environment, then who knows what we might be capable of? Probably some amazing stuff. Our sponsor Raycon Everyday Earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. And best of all, they come at the same low price. That's half the price of other premium audio brands. Now, not all audio experiences should use the same sound profile, especially if you're listening to music and then switch to a podcast, which is why I love Raycon's three easily adjusted sound profiles so you can have the best sound profile for each experience. With optimized gel tips, these earbuds will never budge or fall out of your ears, which makes listening to audio a much more pleasant and seamless experience. And with eight hours of playtime and 32 hours battery life with the charging case, you'll always be ready to listen to music, watch videos, or listen to podcasts. You can get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. They're priced just right. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash teslaspace to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. And now let's get back to the video. And then obviously energy is going to be the other side of the equation, truly sustainable, zero emissions energy in an abundant supply. This is so easy to do if we just make green energy generation a fundamental for everything that we build. The Tesla Gigafactory in Texas, for example, they're covering the entire roof in solar panels and Tesla is building a battery storage installation on site. Why don't we do this with every factory, every grocery store, every Walmart, every shopping mall? We have all of these buildings that take up giant footprints with big, flat, empty space on the roofs. Countless opportunities to generate cheap green energy out of nothing but light from the sun, and we don't do it. 
That needs to change. Make solar energy and battery storage a part of the building code. Just like nowadays you would never construct a building without an HVAC system, we should never build anything without an integrated sustainable energy system either. All right, so that's all of the practical, realistic stuff covered. Let's get into some properly crazy futuristic tech integrations that put this idea over the top. If this is Elon Musk's cyber utopia, then we know that Neuralink brain implants and artificial intelligence are going to be ubiquitous. What does that mean for a society? Well, as a Neuralink implanted person, you'd be able to integrate seamlessly with the city infrastructure. Something like Google Maps constantly running inside your brain, overlaying directions and information on your vision as augmented reality, guiding you through the city and the transit system. You'd walk into any building and instantly know the layout. You could upload your shopping list to your Neuralink and it would guide you through the grocery store on a custom path to get you in and out as fast as possible and you don't even have to stop to check out because the Neuralink recorded everything you placed in the cart and uploaded your purchases to the store's network. You would never have to go to the doctor for a regular checkup. Your Neuralink would constantly monitor your body and instantly notify both you and the hospital if anything was out of the ordinary. The hospital could probably even push a software update to your Neuralink to correct imbalances. Communications and news updates would be instant and direct to your brain. You'd always know everything that you need to know. Actually, this sounds more and more like being integrated with the Borg Collective the deeper we go, and maybe that's not so great. It's an interesting thing to think about, but probably terrible in practice. Let us know what you think. Now, what if, for whatever reason, we wanted to leave our techno paradise and set out into the wider world? Is there a better way to maximize efficiency for traveling outside of your own city? For medium distance travel, the best option is going to be the Hyperloop. So this would just be a bigger and faster extension to the local underground tunnel transit network. The difference between the Hyperloop and the regular transit loop is that a Hyperloop operates in a vacuum. So the tunnel is a sealed loop with all of the air sucked out, and they do that to eliminate the wind resistance in the loop and therefore allow the train or pod or whatever you want to call it to move at incredibly high speeds basically operating at just below the speed of sound at around 760 miles per hour. These hyperloops would probably work to connect nearby cities. Each US state could probably have its own hyperloop system, and smaller countries could have their own national loops. But this doesn't work for long distances very well because of the energy required to maintain the vacuum over such a long distance. So. How would Elon Musk travel the world if he had his way? By rocket ship, probably. Elon has floated the idea that the new Starship rocket at SpaceX could be used as a point-to-point -point transport vehicle here on Earth. So the idea is that you load up into a gigantic rocket that's 9 meters in diameter and over 100 meters tall. You get blasted up into a very low orbit around the Earth, where your starship circles around until it's over top of your destination. Then it dives back towards the surface and lands vertical with a very precisely controlled set of rocket engines. With this kind of transport, you could probably go from New York to Shanghai in about 45 minutes. Every major coastal city could probably have its own spaceport. They do have to be a pretty long distance away from civilization just because of the extreme noise the starship makes when it launches and lands. But again, tunnels. You get out of the rocket and into an elevator that drops you down into a transit pod that whisks you away under the ocean floor and directly into the city center. Okay, so all of that stuff is pretty crazy, but this is all based on projects that Elon Musk is actively working on right now. We're just taking an idea like The Boring Company that is in a very early stage of development and then extrapolating that out to what its full potential might be down the road. It's about where this technology can take us if it continues to grow and improve. But let's hear what you think the best feature might be in the city of the future. Drop your theories down below. And then outro. 
Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.